Hi, I'm Dr. Charles Machel. Welcome to InsideCardiacArrest.com. Here you will find what you need to know about sudden cardiac arrest, risk factors, treatments and therapies for sudden cardiac arrest, and helpful information about your heart. The American Heart Association reports that every day in the United States, almost 900 people experience sudden cardiac arrest. That's more than 325,000 people a year. Sudden cardiac arrest, or SCA, occurs when the heart abruptly stops beating, halting the circulation. Paradoxically, the rhythm of the heart is actually a rapid, irregular rhythm called ventricular fibrillation, or VF. When the ventricles fibrillate, they don't contract normally, making it impossible to pump blood or oxygen to the body. People who have survived a previous heart attack or who have been diagnosed with some forms of heart disease are at risk for sudden cardiac arrest. Cardiologists measure heart function by a number called the ejection fraction. The ejection fraction, or EF, is the percentage of blood that is pumped out of your heart during each beat. Medical research has shown that people with a low ejection fraction are at risk for developing abnormal heart rhythms and sudden cardiac arrest. An echocardiogram is a commonly used test to determine EF. Sudden cardiac arrest often occurs without any warning at all. However, some symptoms include sudden collapse, loss of consciousness, abnormal breathing, and inability to find a pulse or loss of blood pressure. Without immediate treatment of sudden cardiac arrest, there is little chance for survival. Options for immediate treatment include cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, to help keep the heart and blood pumping, or the use of an automated external defibrillator to shock the heart and restore it to a normal rhythm. People who recover from sudden cardiac arrest or who have the potential for sudden cardiac arrest may receive an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, also called an ICD. An ICD is a small programmable internal defibrillator that can be implanted in patients that are at high risk for sudden cardiac arrest. To know if, when, and what type of therapy might be needed, the ICD monitors or senses the heart 24 hours a day. While pacemakers can speed up a slow heart rate, ICDs are designed to slow down a fast heart rate. In addition, many ICDs also contain a built-in full-featured pacemaker. The device is implanted under the skin and attached to one or more leads, or pacing wires, which are placed in or on the heart muscle. During the implant, a thin insulated wire called the lead is inserted through a vein in the body. The tip of the lead, which is called an electrode, is then placed in one of the heart's chambers. The other end of the lead is attached to the ICD, which is usually placed just under the skin in the chest. When an ICD detects an irregular heart rhythm, it is programmed to send treatment, an electrical shock, to your heart. ICDs also constantly monitor your heart's rhythm. A special tabletop computer called a programmer enables a physician to talk to the ICD after it has been implanted. The physician can evaluate the ICD's performance and change settings without the need for further surgery. A telemetry wand is placed on your chest over the implanted device enabling the ICD to communicate with the programmer and vice versa. More than 35,000 ICDs are implanted every year, and they've been proven to be over 98% successful in restarting hearts that have gone into sudden cardiac arrest. After the procedure, you may feel drowsy or experience some tenderness and soreness at the implant site, but by the next day, you'll probably be able to perform most necessary daily activities. It is important, though, to remember that everyone recovers at a different pace. When you return home, you should relax and take it somewhat easy. It is common to tire easily after surgery. Also, avoid sudden jerky movements with your arms or stretching or reaching over your head. Physical activity may be resumed once the incision is healed. It may be beneficial for patients to begin taking short walks or to engage in another form of mild activity to get into shape. Your physician will tell you which activities can be resumed and when. It's important for you to follow your physician's instructions for returning to normal activities and for giving your heart time to heal. Generally, healing is completed in about 12 weeks. You should address specific questions regarding your progress with your physician. Thank you for watching. This video was created by St. Jude Medical to provide information about sudden cardiac arrest. This is not a substitute for medical advice. If you have questions about a heart condition, please talk to your physician.